This is our sixth part of what we've been talking about from freedomfirstparty.net. Ladies and gentlemen, we started out the basic foundation of the biggest problem that we're having falls back with the Federal Reserve Act, 1913, falls under the state of emergency under that public law 148 stat 1, falls under the Social Security Act of 1935, and the Alien Registration Act of 1940. These four is where the biggest issues that we're having with. Because remember, the Federal Reserve Act, 1913, created what was known as Federal Reserve Notes. These. Created these. These are the Federal Reserve Notes. This is what McFadden sat here and said in 1932 is a mere promise to pay. He point blank said, it is not money, but a promise to pay. The Federal Reserve Act under Section 16 sits here and shows that we are not supposed to have had these. That state of emergency sit here and took our gold and silver. The Social Security Act of 1935 created a dollar worth on every living child born up to present date as we are still living they are still collecting money off of it the alien registration expert created the birth certificate what we want to get into here today is the department of transportation dot this is one of the biggest money making schemes and scams out here today among the american people under that state of emergency, your vehicle was turned over to the state because it's registered to the state. You have to have a license. It's registered. We're going to cover some of this information here. But first, I want to get back in and I want to show you under Title 23 CFR, Section 1250. And if you sit back and remember in the other videos we talked about political subdivision i want to sit here and i want to show you what we're talking about political subdivision participation in state highway safety program section 1250.1 scope This part establishes guidelines for the state to assure they're meeting the requirements of the 40% of political subdivision participation in state highway safety program under Title 23 USC 402B1C. Ladies and gentlemen, Title 23 USC code 402 is the federal grant side that the governor agreed to on the driver's license site. What this means is that every time you're pulled over and they're trying to cite you, it comes under an administrative order. It comes under administrative regulations. That it comes down from the Department of Transportation, from the Secretary of Transportation. But we're going to go back and we're going to show you here in Title 23 CFR that we have agencies that is regulating traffic flow, regulating the speed limits, regulating seat belts, regulating DUI. It's all done through administrative agencies. It's not done by Congress. This for makes everything an administrative issue. Well, let me go down here a little bit more and let me show you. Under 1250.2 purpose, the purpose of this part is to provide guidelines to determine whether a state is in compliance with the requirement that at least 40% of all federal funds are purported under 23 USC will be expended to political subdivisions of such states. Political subdivisions. Again, this falls under your local community, your county. 
It's all supposed to be coming into. They're supposed to get 40%. You go down and you talk to your local county commissioners. You go down and talk to your city council. They're going to tell you, what are you talking about? We don't know anything about this. And they're absolutely right because the judges and the lawyers and the prosecution is embezzling this into their fund under the CAFR account, which has been brought up on this show many different times. It's embezzlement. The political subdivision is not getting it. Under 1250.3 policy, to assure that the provisions of 23 USC code 402B1C are complied with, the NHTSA and FHWA field office well. Prior to approving the state, the state uh, work work program reviews the AWP and well, each of the subliminal plans will make up the AWP. Ladies and gentlemen, the NH. TSA regional administrators will review the 14 and a half safety standard area for which NHTSA is responsible in the FHWA division administrators. Ladies and gentlemen, the key word is administrators, administration. All this can be found in Title 23. CFR under the Highway Safety Act. Let me go down through and let me pull you up into section 20, uh, 1327 because this is very significant. Under 1327, this clearly goes back and shows that everything under 1327 comes under administration. You notice that I am pulling all this information out of their books. I am not bringing any of this stuff out of my head. I'm showing you exactly where it's at in their books. I am giving them credit. The sister shows they wrote this. These are the guidelines. These are the regulations. 1327 procedures for participating in and receiving information from the National Drivers Registration Problem Drivers Pointers System. National Registration, another administrative agency. If it wasn't for the fact that they didn't have these in, the, in their own books, it would be awful hard to sit back, come to you people, lay it out, and explain it to you without having their documentation. Their documentation is what makes this thing so valuable, and once you understand, it is their requirements. It's their position. They wrote it. Under 1327.1 scope, this part provides procedures for the state to participate in the National Driver's Registration, Problem Driver Pointing System, and for other authorized parties to receive information from the NDR, National Driver's Registration. Ladies and gentlemen, driver's license are not state. Driver's license are federal. If you are in Maine, or you're in Florida, or you're in California, it's all hooked in to the federal system on driver's license. The courts that you walk into are going to sit back and say, oh, you can't bring federal laws into the courtroom. You can't bring federal issues into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here showing you driver's license are a federal issue. They are federal regulations. They are under federal guidelines. The state agreed to it under Title 23, USC Code 402. 
under government grants. We'll get into that. We'll show you. The purpose of this part is to implement the NDR Act of 1982 as amended. Driving history. Driver improvement purposes. An <coughs> officer, uh, Section 8, an officer, chief warrant officer, or an enlisted member of the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve, including a cadet or an application for, for appointment to enlistment of any and for the foregoing and any members of uniformed service who is assigned to the Coast Guard. Driver's license comes under Coast Guard issue. Sits there and says, driver's license history means a detailed description of an individual's driving record used in the American Association of Motor Vehicles Administrators. Listen to what I said here and said. American Association of Motor Vehicles Administrators. Commercial Driver's License Information System. CDL. IS. CDL. Driver's improvement purposes means information requests made by chief driver's license officials in connecting with the control and rehabilitation of drivers who are based on their records suspected of being or knowing to be problem drivers. Driver's license purposes means information requests made by the chief driver's license official to determine if individuals apply for original up to the top. Whoops. Sorry. Let me minimize this. But ladies and gentlemen, the issue is everything that we're talking, everything we've ever showed you, is setting in their rules, in their regulations, in their guidelines of everything that they've ever done. It all falls back under their system. There we go. Blow it back up. <coughs> Newly temperated or duplicate licenses have had their driver's privileges withdrawn in some other state. Ladies and gentlemen, they run tracks on you. For the court to sit back and tell you that driver's license are not a federal issue. They're lying through their teeth. Why? Because what we showed you previously, 40% to the political subdivision. For that judge in that courtroom to hear any case is bias and prejudice because he has a vested interest of 40% to come into that political subdivision. You think for one minute he's not going to find you wrong? He's not going to find something wrong with you. This is why when we sit down and we explained so much here to you people about this, we sit back and showed you under the own Highway Safety Act, under their own rules, under their own regulations, that this had to go to the Secretary of Transportation Secretary of Transportation has to hear this case, not the local judge. The local judge has no jurisdiction to hear this because he has he is a party of interest. He is a party of interest on this. He has a vested income. The police officers have vested income. 
The prosecutors have vested income. The problem of it is the local community is not getting it. And if they are, they're not sitting here telling you. This comes down to, this is what you call racketeering enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. This comes under what is known as RICO. They are embezzling. The crimes that's being committed out here in the street by the local law enforcement of what they're doing and how they're doing it is beyond comprehension. It is totally beyond their comprehension of what they're doing. It is totally unbelievable. A lot of these people, in some ways, really, truly do not know what they're involved in. It's a job. And that's how they look at it. It's a job. I'm being paid. I've got medical. i got insurance. i got a retirement. I'm not going to create anything that's going to create a problem. Here, ladies and gentlemen, under Title 23... USC code under 402 highway program and it states each state shall have a highway safety program approved by the secretary designed to reduce traffic accident and death injuries and property damage resulting therefrom such programs shall be in accordance with uniform guidelines promulgated by the secretary Says uniform guidelines <laughs> shall be existed in terms of performance criteria. In addition, since uniform guidelines shall include programs to reduce injuries and death results from motor vehicles being driven in excess of posted speed limits. To encourage the proper use of occupant protection devices, including the use of safety belts and children restraint systems by occupants of motor vehicles and to increase public awareness of the benefit of motor vehicle equipment with airbags. To reduce death and injuries results from persons driving motor vehicles with impaired by alcohol or other controlled substance. To reduce death rates and injured results from accidents involving motor vehicles and motorcycles. To reduce injuries with death resulting from accidents involving school buses and to improve law enforcement services and motor vehicle accident prevention, traffic supervisors, and post-accident procedures. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the whole list of what they're going down. This is what the governor agreed to. This is what the governor agreed to. Problem of it is, there's only two types of driver's licenses. A CDL, which is commercial driver's license, and a CMB, Commercial Motor Vehicle License, two. There's only two types, CDL and Commercial Motor Vehicle. There's no third. That's the point. There is no third. You only have two. And what we sit back and showed you here yesterday, and I'm going to bring it back up here, because it's very significant of what we're getting into and what we're sitting here and what we are. Because there is only two types of driver's licenses. And we're going to bring them up. I'm going to show you where they're at. Because this is what I found into my case down here in North <laughs> Carolina. We're going to show you the federal side, but you're going to have to come back and check your own state. Because the Secretary of State is actually the only one who has authorization to sit down and pull your driver's license. It's not a judge. That judge has no standing because he has vested interest in the outcome. The prosecutor has vested interest in the outcome. This is why you need somebody who's supposed to be impartial. This is why this is an administrative issue. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. And the courts and your lawyers and your prosecutors and your judges are not going to sit back and tell you this. Because if they did, then they're losing out on court costs and court fines and imprisonment time. Because according to what we are pulling up here, 
there's nothing supposed to be for imprisonment for driving. Any type of driving while there's nothing that says imprisonment. And they're doing it every day. They're doing it every day to the people. Well, you don't have a license. You're going to go to jail for 60 days. There's nothing in the law that says you're supposed to go to jail for 60 days. The bottom line is, we're not qualified. And that's, listen to the words here. We're not qualified. I'm not saying that we don't have to have one. Because when you make that comment, we don't have to have one. Then what about the semi-truck drivers? What about the taxi cab drivers? What about the school bus drivers? They are required to have one. So is driver's license required? Most certainly. But it's for a class of people that's in commerce. Remember what we just showed you? Commercial. It deals with commercial activity. This is what we're getting into again. Under Title 49, USC Code, Subtitle 6, Part B, Chapter 313, Section 31301, Definition, Commercial means trade, traffic, and transportation. Just because you are out on a road, ladies and gentlemen, you are traveling. And there's no law that says you're not allowed to travel. You are allowed to travel. Of course, the judge is going to come back up and say, well, didn't you buy gas? Well, now you're in commerce because you bought gas. Didn't you go to the grocery store? Well, now you're in commerce. The point being of it is, did I punch a time clock? Am I getting paid to go down and get gas? Am I being paid to go down and get groceries? Am I on a time clock and goes, click, this is my time. When I come home, I punch out. No. This is part of the, the problem here. A lot of you people want to come in and you want to use, well, the Constitution says, Constitution does not say one thing about a driver's license. It says you had the right to travel, but that goes back to legislation. They have a right to travel from home to office. But see, what people miss the point here, they have a right to travel and they cannot be interfered with. But there's three clauses in there. They commit a felony. They commit an act of treason. Or they commit a misdemeanor. Now they can be stopped. Now they can be charged. Otherwise, they have free access from home to their office. But if they want to go to their, their Senate, Senate or the, the House of Representatives, they want to leave their home. They want to stop by the grocery store and rob the grocery store. They're not immune. They committed a crime. So people are sort of taking this out of context. Well, we have a right to travel. No, that right to travel pertains to them, but there's three stipulations. And that's basically what Supreme Court sit back and says. There's three stipulations. That the only way that you can be stopped, and that is personal damage, property damage, or reckless endangerment. If you are out here endangering, a taillight being out is not endangering. Nobody get injured, and that's not property damage. If you got a license plate light out, that is not property damage. That's not injury. That's not endangerment. Law enforcement does not understand the law. Because the moment you bring up the law to them, their comment is, oh, you're one of them sovereign citizens. You're one of them patriot people. Oh, you're one of them constitutional people. No, sir. All we're doing is sitting here saying, did you bother reading the law? You wrote it. You're supposed to be enforcing. Don't you know what you're enforcing? It has nothing to do with constitutional. It has nothing to do with being a sovereign. It has everything to do with there's only two classifications for a driver's license, a CDL and a commercial. Do I meet the qualifications? Am I on the payroll? Am I hauling produce? Am I hauling products? Am I hauling passengers that is paying me? Is there a clock in my car like a taxi cab? I'm being paid to haul people. Absolutely not. Your soccer mom 
or your baseball mom or your football mom going out, taking kids to school and running them to, to the sports is not being paid. She doesn't meet the qualifications. <coughs> Neither do the dads. This is the whole point. This is what is being eluded by the court system. Why? Because again, like we talked, the Federal Reserve Act, the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve notes is a worthless piece of paper. A state of emergency put your vehicle under state property. Social Security Act sit down, put a price tag on you. Alien Registration Act seal it with a bond because your birth certificate is a, is a bond because it's on bond paper. It's all about the money. It's all about what they can swindle out of you. And now we bring in the Highway Safety Act. Now that political subdivision is entitled to 40% of the federal funding. Now, let's make a distinction here between court costs and fines. That's not federal funding. That's over and beyond. But see, they named the state of in that courtroom. They're not naming the political subdivision. Therefore, the political subdivision is being swindled out of their share. Let's get in into the driver's license. Okay. It sits here and says, has a gross vehicle weight or gross vehicle weight of at least 26,000 one pound, whichever is greater or a lesser gross vehicle weight or a gross vehicle weight of the Secretary of Transportation prescribed by regulating, but not less than a gross weight of rating of 10,001 pound. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you got your two weight classifications. 26,001 pound, 10,001 pound. Most vehicles you drive has a weight of not much more than five to 6,000 pounds. My truck, I got an excursion, weighs out about, about 5,600, maybe 6,000 pounds. I'm still 4,000 pounds light of having a driver's license. If you've got a motorcycle that weighs out 800 pounds, you're about 9,600 pounds short of having have to have a motor license to drive with. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the one that wrote these laws up. They did. What's the use of having this stuff in the books if they're not going to follow it? Why create the libraries that's got stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and volumes and volumes and volumes of laws and they're not going to follow any of it? And they sit here and how much did they pay for these books? How much did they pay the printer? To sit down and write this stuff, and they're not going to use it. They're not going to follow it. And then when people like us come in and say, hey, excuse me, here's what the law sits here and says. This is the requirement. That was the federal requirement of what it gets into. Let's get in and talk about some of the state requirements. Now, what I pulled up here is North Carolina. North Carolina has to come in compliance with federal guidelines. They have to sit down and meet the same specifications. North Carolina statute, section 20, 0.013C and 32B clearly shows that all North Carolina driver's license are commercial driver's license. Commercial driver's license, CDL. A license issued by the state to an individual who resides in the state that authorities that authorizes the individual to drive a class of commercial motor vehicle. Drive a class of commercial motor vehicle. A non-resident commercial driver's license is issued by the state to an individual who resides in a foreign jurisdiction. We keep running across that word commercial. Commercial. Commercial motor vehicle. Any of the found me motor vehicles that are designed or used in transporting passengers or property. 
a Class A motor vehicle has a combined GVWR of at least 26,001 pounds and includes as part of the combination and tow unit that has a GVW of at least 10,001 pounds provided. Ladies and gentlemen, are we seeing that the federal guidelines are being implemented in the state? A Class B motor vehicle, a Class C motor vehicle that meets either the following description is designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver, is transporting hazardous material, and is required to be precarded in, a, in accordance with Title 49 CFR Part 1, 172, Subpart F. 16 or more people. How many people can you get on a motorcycle? Can you get 16 people on a motorcycle? How many people can you get in a VW to drive safely? Ladies and gentlemen, I realize we're cracking jokes here, but the thing is, it's the fact. This is how the laws are written. Passenger vehicle, an excursion. Passenger vehicle. Vehicles transporting persons on sight, seeing, or travel tours. If you've got an excursion, are you transporting people for sightseeing? Are you doing traveling tours with these people? For hire, passenger vehicle. Vehicle transportation, persons for compensation. Ladies and gentlemen, there's the key word. Compensation. Are we being compensated when we're driving? Are we being paid? Ladies and gentlemen, this is in their wording. Stop and think about it. Semi-truck drivers, they get paid per mile. They get paid per hour. School bus drivers are getting paid hourly rates. Taxi cab drivers get paid because they've got that little meter and they're being getting a percentage off their meter. Where is the soccer mom making any money taking kids back and forth to school? Where is the soccer mom or the dad going to the grocery store? Where are we being compensated? Where is there any pay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the point that we're trying to get across here. Their own laws sit here and say you have to be compensated. It specifically tells you the qualifications for that driver's license. They only have two, CDL and a commercial motor vehicle, 26,001 pound, 10,001 pound. That's it. That's how simple this argument is. Think about what we're sitting here saying. Now, also go back in and understand what we sit here and brought up here earlier where the driver's issue has to go before the Secretary of Transportation. Only he can sit here and pull your driver's license. Nobody else can. That judge can't. That judge doesn't have the authority to sit down and pull your driver's license. He's claiming authority, but he doesn't have that authority. The cops don't know any better. But see, now I want you people to stop and think about this. This is an administrative issue. Who gave you your driver's license? Was it the judge? Was it the courthouse? Was it legislation? Or was it under an administration? Under an agency? 
comes under agency. Remember what we talked about in the state of emergency clause where the president through proclamation gave agencies the authority to regulate? They sit down and gave agencies the ability to sit down and regulate and order and define everything. Who's pulling us over? Is it us or is it an agency? Is it a department? Is it an administrative branch of government that's pulling us over? Now comes the question is this. What would happen if you went back and you pulled up the laws that were created the sheriff department? You go back and pull up the legislative laws that created the police department. You go back and pull up the laws that created the state highway patrol. Go back and pull the laws up. I have in North Carolina, you know what I found out? The sheriff department has the ability to run the jail. The sheriff department is a bailiff in that courtroom. The sheriff department serves paperwork. If they got warrants, they got serv they got summonses, they got writs. That's the sheriff department for the county. County jail. Bailiff serving paperwork. Is there something missing here? Where's the authority for them to sit here and drive out here in the highway and pull you over and give you a ticket? Where's the authority? There's no legislative authority that gives them the ability to sit down and pull you over. None. This is law enforcement. Well, does it, does it say driver's license? Does it sit here and talk about it? No. Law enforcement is controlling the jail. Law enforcement is being a bailiff. Law enforcement is serving paperwork from the court. That's law enforcement. The courts want to sit down and give carte blanche out to these departments. If it's not written in the law, they don't have the authority to do what they're doing. And they don't have carte blanche to go do it. What we pulled up here on the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, when we pulled it up, let me see if I can pull it up again here for you. North Carolina What we turned around and found out here in Wikipedia very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now I know, I know some people sit back and say you can't go a whole lot with Wikipedia and I understand that. But I also understand this. They give you laws in here that are very significant of what their job duties are. And what it sits back and shows under their own job description, under this right here, this GS 14 399. Let me pull that up for you and let me show you what it means. A GS 14 399. This is North Carolina obligation, littering. That's what they're supposed to be out here on the highway for litter control. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't me sitting here writing this material. It's not me sitting back and making up all this stuff to put out here on the internet to come on your show. I'm sitting here showing you it's under their own statutes. Their obligation is litter control. There's nothing in here that gives them the authority to pull you over because you got a tail light out or because you're doing 75 and a 65. You're, if you're not throwing litter out, they can't stop you. So litter inspectors would be a, a governmental administration? Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if it, if, if it wasn't so serious, this is a joke. If you go back in and you start doing the research on the job description of your law enforcement, you're going to find out they don't have the authority that the courts are giving them. They Deputy don't have it. Deputy Sheriff Richards is a litter inspector. Basically, yes. We're coming down no, to it. He's a sheriff. He's a sheriff. He's a sheriff. The, sheriff, the sheriff's duties is being a bailiff in a courtroom, <coughs> controlling the court, running the county jails, and delivering summonses, warrants, writs to execute paperwork that the court gives him. That's law enforcement. Then why did you throw us over for a tailwind? Because they, people aren't challenging it. People aren't bringing it in. The sit down says, I pulled your job description out of your state legislation, and it doesn't say you can pull me over. Again, it comes back in. Local police, check the laws. The only people that can pull you over for a driver's issues is DOT enforcement, Department of Transportation. Why? It's an administrative issue. This is why the Secretary of Transportation has to hear the case. Where we're making our mistakes is when they pull us over, we're not removing it from that court, from that county, and we're not moving it to the Department of Transportation. We're not moving it to DOT for a hearing. We didn't know any better. When these courts and these local cops are pulling us over, there is a vested interest under the Highway Safety Act. There is an issue here. They have a vested interest in this. This is why the understanding the DOT side of this, this is why I sit down I showed you Title 23 CFR, the money that's supposed to be going back to the political subdivision. This is why I sit back and showed you under that 1327 that this comes under the AAMVA, American of Motors, American Association for Motor Vehicles Administrators. This is an administrative agency. This is what turns around is the whole issue. It's an administration has nothing to do with judicial. Has nothing to do with what we're with what they're trying to pull here on us. Ladies and gentlemen, driver's license is interstate. Driver's license is federal. This is the significance of what we're trying to pull up here, what we're trying to educate. I'm not sitting here saying that there's no laws, ladies and gentlemen. That is not what we're sitting here saying. We're sitting here saying that they are misapplying the laws on their side of the fence. They are deliberately and intentionally full knowledge of what they're doing, disregarding the very things that they put in And that they wrote for them to follow. It is up to us, the American people, it is up to us to stand up 
and start bringing this stuff forward. It is up to us to sit down and start exposing this stuff. The lawyers can't, because remember what we brought up about the lawyer? Under Title 36, United States Code, under 705, they are a franchise. They're a corporation. They can only work for the administration. They cannot work for the American people because we're not part of their system. Check into your state laws on your bar association. You'll see that they are an agency. They are a corporation. They cannot represent us. Anytime a lawyer walks into that courtroom, he is under the penalty of disbarment. How can you get a fair hearing when the attorney that you have, your counsel that they're giving you, is sitting on an electric chair waiting for that judge to throw the switch to electrocute him because he dare bring up the law in that courtroom and he dare prove you innocent of all charges. And that's exactly, that's exactly what we're dealing with here. That attorney that you have has got a rope around his neck by the judge and that judge has got the lever up her. And the moment that attorney sits here and says one thing about the law, sits here and tries to prove you innocent by bringing in the proper documentation, that judge pulls the lever and it drops that lawyer right down through the floor and hangs him. And we're supposed to trust this guy and we're supposed to have our faith in him knowing that he's got an electric chair and he's sitting in or he's got a rope around his neck. This is why they don't like people like us coming in. They cannot do that to us. But again, it goes back under the 11th Amendment. They don't have any judicial power to start with. They sit here and gave that up under the 11th Amendment. Everything's administration. Everything that I'm sitting here showing you is all administrative laws, all administrative procedures, all administrative rules and regulations. This is their requirements of how they're supposed to sit down and run their office. This is the significance of getting into their books. This is why I, I sit here and promote, read what they wrote. Walk into the courtroom and ask the judge, is this not what your law says? For example, I'm dealing with an issue down here in North Carolina. Dealing with a traffic issue. I got pulled over because I had a blue light sitting in my Jeep. I want to show you something here. And ladies and gentlemen, this is this is where you fall short. You really need to go back in. You need to learn to read their laws. You really need to learn how to read their laws. It is really significant for you to be able to come back and do that. Because if you can read their laws and understand what their law sits here and says. General Statutes 20-130.1 Use of red or blue lights on vehicles prohibited except use of red or blue light on a vehicle prohibited except it is unlawful for any person to install or activate or operate a red light in any or in or other vehicles in this state as used in this subsection unless the contents requires otherwise red light means to operate red light not sealed in the manufacturer original package wait a minute manufacturer original package there is not one police cruiser one fire truck or one ambulance comes from the manufacturer equipped with red lights or blue lights the cars may have a special suspension they may be tweaked but when that department gets that car it is sent out to a private contractor 
that had the lights put on it. What does that sit here say? Manufacture original package. There's not a cruiser out here that comes from the dealership, comes from the manufacturer, from Chrysler or Ford or Chevy that is put on a truck and dropped off at the dealership with the, with the lights and all the decals. That's all done by a private contractor. That sits here and means that every cruiser out here is in violation of their own set of laws. And they want to hold us to a set of standards. They're not even following their own set of rules. Learn to read their law. That right there with what I got busted for. Well, your Jeep wasn't manufacturally equipped with a blue light. You installed it yourself. Right there it says it has to be manufactured. Theirs aren't. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fraud that's being perpetrated out here on the highway. This is why we're coming back and we're talking about the driver's license. There's only two types, CDL and a commercial motor vehicle. There is no third type. Well, that's, that's part of it because it's understandable because you have people out here committing crimes. They're using blue lights. They're hijacking trucks. They're hijacking cars, pulling over women, raping, pillage, plunder, murder. So the laws in, in one extent has validity. It is to prevent. But I just sit here and showed you Correct the law the way you wrote it. Then follow it. Don't write the law to mean one thing, and then you're coming back in and charging me under something entirely different than what the law actually said here and said. Don't misuse it. Yeah. If you're going to question, talk loud enough for it to pick up. But see, this is this is where the this is where the points are coming in for you 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 truck drivers. You're going through these local towns. I realize it's easy to pay the fine. Pay the extortion and get on your way. That's the same thing with, with the regular citizens out here. It's, I would rather pay a $500 fine than miss a day's worth of work, which I'm only going to make $50. Now, wait a minute. You're going to pay a $500 fine to save 50. I would rather save 450 bucks and go fight them. Because the more of us that would go into these courtrooms knowledgeable in the law, and it's easy to do, go back in, see what they charged you under. Nine times out of 10, what they charged you under was taken totally out of context. The other 1% of the time, they flat out lied. For you semi-truck drivers out here that's dealing with these issues, start demanding an administrative hearing. Start demanding a hearing before DOT. Because once you start demanding hearings before DOT, and they start, and you start showing where the local sheriff department, the local police department, the local state highway patrol do not meet the qualifications to be a DOT certified. Because now what we're mixing here, we're mixing federal transportation with state agencies. Start challenging them. Start demanding and see a DOT certified. Because a lot of you truckers, you guys understand this. A lot of times when you get told, you get a license, you get a letter from DOT wanting to suspend, and you don't, you're not realizing what they're handing you. That's your administrative side of this. That is your administrative ability to turn around and have a hearing 
and go back and show that that law department that sat here and pulled you over did not have the ability to pull you over to start with because in their own state statutes, they didn't have the qualifications to stop you. If their duties are to deal with the courtroom to deliver paperwork in prisons, where's their authority to stop you out on the street? Your city police, where is, you gotta get into city ordinances. What is their duties under city ordinances? Where in city ordinances does it allow them to sit down and come out on a highway and stop you? And you gotta remember something here. When they're sitting out here on a highway, ladies and gentlemen, this is called stalking. They are stalking you. They are sitting down and they are hunting for you. But on the administrative side, ladies and gentlemen, it's all administration. Don't allow them to pull you into these local courts. Start pushing your administrative remedy. Start talking to the cop. Start producing the laws. If they drag you into the magistrate, start challenging the laws. Start demanding and remove your case to DOT. Remove your case to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Tell them that you want an administrative hearing on this. We need to start educating these people, but we need to be educated ourselves to this level of what we're doing. It takes us to bring this stuff up. It takes us to turn around and correct the system. If we don't stand up for ourselves, who will? And if we don't stand up for others with what we're doing, it's going to continue to get worse because it's nothing but a moneymaker off the Federal Reserve Act and off of the federal funding program under Title 23 CFR under the Highway Safety Act. Ladies and gentlemen, start standing up. Do not allow them to sit down and abuse you any longer. Start challenging them and start understanding the laws and start making the issue, how do I qualify for a driver's license? Where do I meet the qualifications for a driver's license? And for you semi-truck drivers, start pushing for a DOT hearing, not for county. Thank you, and we'll get back with you on, on episode seven. Thank you.